Hi, I'm Holt McCallany, and you're watching Real Fans, Real Talk. Face Facts website. Real Fans, Real Talk.com. For Arthur Domus, Trip Young, and Intern Tom. For the white and black fans, Agent to Manhattan. I get on my back to my bro, Mark the Stats Man. If you're not tuned in, I recommend the CAT scan. And if your brain checks out, then you deserve a backhand. Sports, gossip, all the hot topics. Real Fans, Real Talk.com. Got it. Face the hottest bloggers. Jeremy Lindhurst. We'll log on to the site and you can hear it from them first. I'm talking about the latest. I'm talking about the greatest. Go check out the archives. Even tell a neighbor. Tell him Bobby sent ya. From spring to winter. Tune in to be the only thing on your agenda. Certified co-sign. You know what I'm about, son. Real fans, real talk.com. I'm out work. Real fans. Real talk. Real fans. Real talk. Real fans, real talk.com. Real fans, real talk.com. Real fans, real talk. Real fans, real talk. Real fans, real talk.com. Real fans, real talk.com. Hello everyone, Mark the Statman's coverage with Real Fans Real Talk and RealFansRealTalk.com. I'm here for the Hit Spring League, that's Hoops in the Sun Spring League, where we have our featured player, Ron Hargrave, also known as H2O, and we're going to see him play in a sec. But um, just tell us a little bit about the Dykeman tournament. Oh, Dykeman is definitely one of the best uh, streetball tournaments going today. Uh, it, it's taken over Rucker, and um, you know, back in the days, Rucker was the main tournament, and now everybody's coming to Dykeman. Kevin Durant even came out there. Um, everybody, you know, J.R. Smith playing there in the summertime. But um, Dykeman is definitely one of the, the the top streetball tournaments going right now, sponsored by Nike, and it's a it's a venue that really helped me get my name as well and boost me up to the person and the player that I am today. It's it's the top one out there until of course we start the real fans real talk. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Streetball <laughs> tournament. And that's the new wave right there. But you know, in the in the meet, I, I noticed you're wearing a Bulls. Is that just for style or is that your team? I, well, I like this Bulls hat in mm. particular. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a I'm an old Bulls fan. Oh, so like back the nineties. Oh, nineties. Yeah, 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 right. yeah, well. You saw him on the weed. <laughs> you saw him on the Wheaties box, and you're like, I mean, that's my dude. I Mars mean, Blackman days. Gro <laughs> growing up. You, you know, like Mike? Yeah, I was, was Mike. I was more I of a Scotty, Scotty Pippen fan. No, I, you know, I was uh, more of a, you know, I wasn't like everybody else jumping on the bandwagon. I actually did. You know, what, do you, like, what do you think of the Bulls' chances now that uh, Derrick Rose is rumored to be able to come back in the, in the season? I, I think they should actually, I think he should just sit out the rest of the season. Mm -hmm. I think he should not play. They might come back and mess up the chemistry. And also, I don't think he'll be himself. You know what I mean? And I think they need... Derrick Rose to be himself to go to that next level. Right now, I think they, they're in a pretty good shape, mm -hmm. and um, I think they should just let him rest for the rest of the year. It's only what, a couple of Do you of think years. they have a chance without him? I don't think they have a chance with him right now. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So I agree. I think they should just let him get 100. <laughs> Somewhere around the middle of the power, right? Yeah, yeah. Not just really stay there, thing. fourth, fifth, whatever, and just see I mean, where it goes. Last year, they, they had the best record in the East before, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, Rose got injured. A lot of them had a lot of hope that they were the ones to compete with the Heat. And there's still a little bit of time left in the season for them to get some type of chemistry going. Like, the, as a Bulls fan, would you want him to, if you were a Bulls fan, would you <laughs> want him to play? If I was a Bull fan, I wouldn't want them to play. Mm. I honestly would not want Derrick Rose to play. I would want them to see where they can go. I don't think right now with him they can win a championship. So what's the point of him coming back right now? You know. So I mean, I, I think they have a, a chance with him because they still have a little bit of time. They're not going to play Miami in the first round. Uh, they have a chance to probably move up a little closer, maybe play him in the second round. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, if he comes back now, they get, they get a few more wins to move up to maybe a five seed but, and play him in the second round. So that will give him some time to get some type of chemistry. He'll have a few games in the rest of the mm -hmm. regular season. He'll have, a, you know, the first round going where he, he'll have some, a little bit of time to play in the playoffs. And, you know, you're talking about a month down the road before you'd have to go up against Miami. So. True, true. What true. do you think, Sean? Uh, well, I'm 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 all for Miami right now, so I'm sorry. Like you, you tell him, you asking me this is like, why? 
Why? So you said you, so the basketball tournaments, they meant a lot to you growing up and stuff like that. So what does it mean for you to still be playing in them now? Um, right now, that's, that's my lifeline right now. A lot of the uh, publicity and the, uh, that I have going on now is from mainly from street ball. You know, having played overseas and things of that nature. But street ball is kind of really keeping my name out there and keeping me fresh. And um, it's allowing me to, you know, continue to play ball and, and continue to, you know, get what I want out of basketball. It's also, you know, getting me things like Cerebellum, H2O, and stuff <laughs> like that, Dill. And, and um, you know, most recently with the street ball, I, um, I was on with Ball Up. I was on uh, MSG. I was on at least five episodes with them this past summer. We came on uh, Master Square Garden Channel. So, you know, and maybe we have something in the works with them still going moving forward. So it's it's been it's been a, a real blessing to continue to play street ball. Announcer for uh, basketball and uh, Uncle G Stacks, tell us how you got into uh, involved in the uh, announcing for this league. Well, uh, I was recruited by the commissioner by Kendrick Flowers in 2007. And I was always a street ball junkie, and I would always come back to the neighborhood telling the stories that they had a spot up there on the beach. And they needed some help, and I was able to come in. And then the thing just went on until so today. That was seven years ago. So. And, and uh, what did you do before that? Did you have like an announcing career prior to no, that? No, prior to that, that I was just a sports junkie and I was always commentating. I used to drive my girl crazy, turning the TV off. I knew I could do it, but I really didn't have the platform, but I always had a love for sports. And being that I came up playing basketball, it's kind of like my first love, so I just grew it. Now it's kind of like nation. And you kind of get uh, some creative nicknames like uh, H2O. Can you tell us about some of those well, what nicknames? Well, what I thought is, you know, we had a thing back in the days where when your jump shot was good, it meant it was good. And we used water in you know, H2O. And he was a guy that just never missed. When he came to us about five years ago, he was those little trailblazers. He was on fire. He played in the spring league. He had the record for about the most three. I think he had hit 10 at one point. And I was the one that really just started calling him H2O and stuff. And went all over the city with him. And that was the problem. So he's just been a hell of a performer. Can you explain to the folks out there how this league works? Is it a certain, uh, um, you, you have to have a certain uh, background in order to qualify well, to make this team? It's a 13-year league. The division was for Pop Cruz, who was the dad of the two young cruises that owned him now. He went to Venice. He came back to a beach five venue and then he went up to Orchard Beach and installed it up there. It's the only site in the city where the beach is played on the side of basketball. Most of them are accredited D1 players, a lot of pros. From Ron Artest to John Kanoa, Marcus Williams, John Lucas III, you can go on and on. But it's a, a fine time for street ball in the Bronx. It's one of the better tournaments. Nike sponsors it. This is our third year with them. And, and it's just a big time, big time street ball tournament. And it's all, it's all five boroughs? It's only one borough, but the guys come from all over. As you saw today, the Brooklyn League came out for our Brooklyn team, came out for our Spring League. And this is only the beginning. We go all the way to May and then June. We pick up at Orchard Beach, but it's a citywide endeavor. It's part of the Brotherhood. It's a community-based program. We do a lot of giveaways. We do a great job with the kids in terms of keeping them locked in on their education. And we try to nurture the kids all the way to the world. How does somebody... Um, Go about joining this league. Like, what, what is this? Well, I think the easiest situation? way. You know, I think the easiest way is to be connected. I think people always bring you around when you know somebody and they need a guy. I think if you follow us on Twitter or Facebook and you see what the league is about, it hoops on the sun dot net. You get an understanding that it's a thread throughout street ball, and that as you know guys and know coaches, and it's almost like a network thing. And then you look up and you're on the biggest stage in the streets. Can you tell?
tell the folks out there uh, what the Facebook and Twitter address is? We go to hoopsinthesun.net. You can like us on Facebook. You can like us on Instagram. We got a great website at hoopsinthesun.net. Or you can go and follow me and Uncle G Stacks on Twitter. And you can always hit me up and I'll keep you abreast of what we're doing in terms of scheduling, in terms of tournament play, and in terms of the age limits. We do a great job with the women's league. Team. And, uh, who do you got in the NBA playoffs coming up? Do you think the Heat are going to repeat? Well, I like LeBron. I think he's playing head and shoulders above everybody else. You know, I'm a Kobe guy, but I give credit to him. I think you know, he's playing outstanding. Anything can happen in the East. But right now, you know, outside of what's going on in the West, we just got to like LeBron. You're a Kobe fan. He obviously has a significant injury now with the torn Achilles. Do you think uh, it's going to drastically affect uh, his play when he comes back? Well, I think the bushes are being called out here. Uh, I think Dr. Buss, he was the guy that kind of held the mentality together with the Lakers. It could change now with Jimmy and uh, his son, and Gene, his daughter, and you know, with Phil not being there. But I think Kobe just needs one more chance to get some out by some good players. He maybe can catch Mike in that other team. Where do you think the Knicks' uh, chances are of uh, taking it? I was impressed yesterday. I'm not a Nick guy, but I was impressed. I'm not really, you got to get pretty good. I think it's more of a than anything. I think he's been able to get in there and really capture the calls. City and the play, and I think just Mike Woodson and his belief in JR, his ability to go out and get Canyon and use him the right way. He's just the coach of the year, whether you're going to mix it. All right, Uncle G Stacks, a pleasure to have you on Real Fans Real Talk. Uh, thank you for being on the program, and uh, make sure you check them out. Oops on the sun, not net. Everyone, Mark the Statman Skevich, RealFansRealTalk.com, back with a guest, Haran Hargrave, aka H2O, back joining us. So for those of you that didn't check us out when we had him on the program before, can you tell the folks out there a little bit about your basketball career, Haran? I played Haran Hargrave, aka H2O, played at the University of Sacramento State, played a little bit overseas, played in Romania, China, Hungary, um, Colombia, Dominican Republic. Different couple different places, um, but uh, I've been playing street ball, been getting my name up out there, played in the ball up uh, reality, the ball up street ball, which was on a reality show, we was on an MSG, and um, you know, I'm a, kind of a street ball legend. All right, street ball gray H2O. Uh, last time you were on the program, we didn't really talk too much about your international play. What is it like playing in different countries as opposed to playing in the US? I mean, it, it's, it's great. You know, the fans treat you like a uh, you're a star, you know what I mean? And it's like you're a whale in a pond out there, you know? Uh, we'll get the same love that, you know, NBA players get over here. And um, I, I, it feels good to be over there and do what you love to do and you get paid for it. And it feels great, you know? So we, I get a little feeling like I, I'm in the league. I'm over there. It's the NBA, but over there, you know what I mean? So it's a great experience, and, and, you know, to be in different countries and travel and things of that nature. It feels really good. All right, and uh, this is your first game with, with this league. Uh, can you tell us a little bit something about how you feel about this league and, uh, and the experience with this new league? Well, this is not my first game here. It's uh, my first game this season with a new team, uh, Rodney Park. Um, we played in the uh, Hit Hoops in the Sun uh, Spring League. Um, it was my first game. Um, I didn't I didn't play last week, so I came up the bench today, and I, I did what I had to do. I, uh, I felt like I, I had a good game, but. Um, I wasn't in the crucial time. But, you know, overall, I put it in pretty well. But the, the coach doesn't know about H2O? Is that yeah, what it is? Because, I mean, even when you were in there, you got a couple of key three pointers yeah. throughout, the, throughout the game. So, one to end off the third quarter, another to give your team a nice cushion. I believe a free throw as well. So, you finished off with seven points in the short amount of minutes that you had. Do you think, uh, you know, are you going to have a discussion with them about playing future minutes to benefit the team? I'm not one of the players to, to uh, really, you know, most people would know me and I like to let my game speak for itself. And then when I got in the game, you know, Hit three and coming in, uh, hit my free throw, finished with about 16 points overall in not even probably 16 minutes in the whole game. Um, you know, I, I probably will have a little discussion with them, talk to them a little bit about that. You know, as you know, everybody's saying my name on the loudspeaker and everything, and it's like, you know, I can do nothing but play when I'm on the court. So I'll probably have a little talk with them. Maybe you should have a talk with Uncle G Stacks and uh, re 
recognize this is H two O we're talking about here. But uh, do you feel that if you would have gotten more minutes, your team would have came out with the W? Because it was a close game. Definitely, I thought we would have won the game. You know the way I was feeling. I was feeling good today. You know, uh, you know uh, I felt like I could have made some more plays down the stretch. And I thought we would have had the win. You know, when I was in the game towards the end. We had a nice little lead. And, you know, it was. Uh, you know, I was thinking a couple plays ahead just to make us you know, finish out the game strong. But I felt like we would have definitely won. We, yeah, they, the other team made a comeback, and you know they, it was a close victory. Towards the end, you had the double technical, which pretty much put the nail in the coffin. What do you, what do you, what's your thoughts on that? Um, you know, I felt it was a foul, uh, you know, going down, you know, for our guys that I felt they fouled, fouled one of my teammates. It was a two-point game. I would have tied up the game. You know, I'm sure you would have made the two free throws. And, uh, you know, it's just a tough no call down the stretch. You know what I mean? But, uh, the, the double tech, you know, that pretty much ended the game was forced to go. You don't get the foul, they get the ball, they get the two free throws. That up four, and they get the ball and bounce. So. How do you how do you feel about the officiating in this league? Obviously, they're you know they're not professional, high paid uh, NBA referees. Do you think they did a pretty decent job? I felt uh, they were terrible both ways. Uh, and, um, a lot of jump balls. Jump balls. You know, um, we, we clearly had the possession of the ball. I think you need to let guys play a little bit. To, you know, but I, I think they called a couple ticky tack fouls. Then they didn't call some fouls like the last one they called. You know, they made a ticky tack foul for them, and then they don't call the one at the end of the game. That they so, you know, I don't think. I know these refs, I've seen them all over, you know, it goes from game to game. Sometimes they ref good games, sometimes they ref like that. I was a little bit torn because I want to root for your team considering the fact that, you know, you, you came on to the Real Fans Real Talk show, you're part of the Real Fans Real Talk family, but the other team you were playing is Brooklyn, and I'm from Brooklyn, so I was kind of like, all right, well, if he loses, at least Brooklyn wins. So. Yeah, I, I guess. I mean, from a fan standpoint, you know. Uh, I was still rooting for your yeah, team. Yeah, it's cool. Like, you guys came out and showed love and showed support, and, uh, you know, uh, I, you know, it was pretty good. You know, it was a pretty good game. I think you should have won. I think we should have won the game. And, um, Can you tell us something about your teammates and the opposing team uh, players as far as their talent and background? Of this? We definitely see a lot of talent out oh, here. Oh, yeah, definitely. definitely. Uh, one of my the guy who got fouled on to left, his name is Aaron Williams. They can't use the problem. He's going to be, you know, he was a little cheaper play. He's been playing ball. He's been 14 years. He's a Delaware. Um, we got Dave Seekers. Um, he's pretty good. Jerome Richardson. On my team. A lot of these guys play, most of the guys play the game one basketball and play either a little bit overseas or, you know, play in the street. On the opposite end, he was all right. He, he played a good game, a good, good, tough game. Um, you know, so, you know, we have a couple other guys. One of the guys who's a national player of the year for Juco, a little guard, he's only seven pounds, seven ounces. And, uh, yeah, so we definitely played the game. Some tough competition out there. It wasn't like it was some bones. I, I, don't, I noticed uh, the announcer saying Super Dave a lot. Super uh, Dave, that was Dave Seaver. What, what's his background? Uh, he went to, uh, I believe, either Delphi or uh, yeah, Delphi. And he, he, that's a division too, but he, he played in New Zealand, I think, this past year. And uh, yeah, so pretty good player, pretty tough player. I played, had battles against him. You know, during the summertime, a lot of this, uh, the spring league, a lot of the summer uh, teams don't put their teams in the spring league, so a lot of, you get a lot of good talent on one team. So most of the guys who are playing will be playing for their own team and be doing having 40 and 50 points, whatever, yeah. on their team. So when you're playing in the spring league, you all come together. So that's why sometimes the minutes and everything like that, you know, up and down. But until come summertime, I'm going to step it up a little bit more than what I can do. Uh, we had some street ball legends, obviously Anthony Mason, who ended up, uh, you know, being un undrafted free agent. Do you think that's ever a possibility uh, to play in the NBA? I, I think it's, everything is a possibility. It's just about the season. Um, you know, if, when you're playing in front of the right people, you know, and that's that's with anything. You know, if you're doing all this and no one sees you, it's like for nothing. You know what I mean? But, and, you know, a couple scouts come to me in games, they, you know, there's some tough talent, some good players out here. And I definitely could play in the NBA. You know what I mean? A lot of these guys work hard. 
you know, no matter what they do, the only thing is that sometimes you have to have real jobs. You gotta get up and work. You know, so you can't put work out three times a day. Maybe you can work out one or two times a day, but in NBA, your job is to work out. Your job is to, to all you do is lift weights, uh, do drills all day. You know what I mean? Like, you get paid to do that. So, when you get some kids sleep all this, you, you, you definitely have to uh, have a, uh, a way of eating and stuff and provide it for yourself. And that's not always basketball, which makes it really hard for you, you know? Speaking of the NBA, what do you, who do you think is uh, going to take it in the playoffs? You think the Eagles are going to beat? I don't like it, personally. I don't nice. like it. I don't nice. like it. Just pound on that one. I like, I like New York Knicks. I feel like we're, we're ready. People underestimate People are just giving the heat to championship. And I don't think it's going to be that easy. You know what I mean? So I think the Knicks will definitely have something to say with that. And Carmelo will have something to say with that. And uh, we play the way we played yesterday. And, and better, we definitely, definitely, you know, we're going to win that. We can win the championship. I don't want to jinx it or anything like that, but, you know, Mark my words, you're taking this right now, I think the Knicks are going to do it. Make me uh, that, that's music to my ears, uh, H2O. Can you remind the folks out there once again about your website? Uh, you can check me out on ronhargrave.com. Uh, uh, again, that's H-A-R-O-N, H-A-R-G-R-A-V-E.com. Uh, you can check me out on Facebook, Ron Hargrave. Uh, check me out on Instagram, H2O5. And uh, Twitter, it's Stargrave3. S-T-A-R-G-R-E-D-E and the number three. That's my information. You know, you guys can check me out. And also, you can support the show. Real fans, real talk. Um, we're doing it. All right, Mark the Statman Skevich, realfansrealtalk.com with H2O. Thanks for being on the program once right. again. And uh, we we'll look uh, forward to having you one more time after the Knicks win the championship so we can show that you predict you right. Yes, Realfansrealtalk.com, everyone. Hello everyone, Mark the Statman Skevich, Real Fans Real Talk at RealFansRealTalk.com here with Joe Cruz Jr. who's the commissioner of the Hoops in the Sun Spring League and uh, Joe, could you tell us a little bit about why you uh, started this league? Yeah, uh, well, we run a tournament out of Orchard Beach for the last 14 years. Uh, that's only a summer league, and we wanted to make sure that some of the people, the guys that play, who don't have a chance to go overseas, has an opportunity to come indoors, working their skills, so they can get ready for that grind in the summertime, as well as, you know, try to perfect their craft, so they can get looks at to go overseas and hopefully go to NBA and stuff like that. So it's our seventh year going on. Uh, we ch chose to do St. Mary because it's, it's prime, you know, real estate in the Bronx. And try to really just help these kids out to get overseas and get looks to go over. So all the games take place here in the Bronx? All games are here, Saturdays, Sundays, sometimes Wednesdays, usually um, about 7 o'clock. And on the weekends, it's from 12 to about 4 o'clock, 5 o'clock in, in the afternoon. And how many teams are in the league? We have six teams in the, on, in the pro division. We have six teams in our 14U boys division. Okay, and those are, uh, you have all five boroughs, and then what else? I mean. um, all five boroughs, sometimes we get um, some, like, players from Westchester uh, County, sometimes from Staten Island and New Jersey, it just depends who's in town. Um, and then it all depends what teams bring those kind of players. So I do this, I do this, you know, because it's my dad's dream and, and he gave me this opportunity to do this before he passed away with my brother, Randy Cruz. And we're just trying to really expand our brand and, and bring our basketball to, to a more of a national level. And when you say expanding and bringing it to a national level, what steps are you taking to get uh, maybe some NBA scouts involved to see the? Because we we saw a lot of talent today. Yeah. And uh, you know, what steps are you taking to see? Well, uh, I mean, get that one going? of the steps is, uh, you know, like you said, is to bring more of the of the NBA talent to to our program. Um, we've also expanded teams. We've gone, you know, we have gone younger as far as our age group, as far as our boys division. We have started at 10 years old and go all the way to adult. Uh, we also expand ourselves with our sponsorships, so we you know, work well with, well with Nike, Mountain Dew, New York Yankees, WellCare, and we're working on some few other sponsors, but also, um, you know, taking our video and putting it online and putting it on the social media aspect, our website that we have in, in place, hoopsinthesun.net, so, you know, trying to do, do those things, but I think our biggest effort is to get the NBA talent to our park, which we had a few in the past few years, but just to bring that more 
No well, problem. now you're on Real Fans Real Talk, so you can't get much bigger than that, yeah, obviously. Absolutely. <laughs> I'm hoping they all hear me out and, and you know, come check out tournament out. And uh, it, it's, it's a fun experience. If you want to come play indoors, St. Mary's, you want to go outdoors, Orchard Beach, Bronx, New York, starting June 8th and 9th. Now, your take on the NBA, playoffs <laughs> are starting, very exciting time in basketball, obviously. Who's your pick? Do you think that the Heat are going to repeat? Um, as long as you had that guy, uh, Mr. James, on anybody's team, I think that uh, he's the most well-rounded player that we have in our game today. Um, I wouldn't put any money against him, but I am a local guy. I want the Knicks to succeed. I think they had a wonderful, wonderful season. Coach Mike Woodson should be the coach of the year. Um, and Carmelo's playing team basketball. They got some veterans that know how to win games. So I like to see them in, in the Eastern Conference Finals, but at the end of the day, I think LeBron and, and that team takes it to a different level and goes back to the Finals. All right, but you think the Knicks do have a legitimate shot at the so. title? I think okay. so. I really do think so. You know, because my whole co-host, Trip Young, just pretty much kind of hands the Heat the title in the beginning of the season, doesn't give the Knicks credit, so I like to hear you say <laughs> that. But uh, can you tell uh, the folks out there, like, a website that they can find yes, out more information uh, about Yes, our website is um, www.hoopsinthesun.net. Um, our Twitter handle is at, hoops, at H-I-T-S Basketball, and our Facebook is Joe Randy Cruz. Um, so if you, once you get those links, you can go anywhere else that we have our viral um, stream, our live video, stuff like that. So All we're right, pretty intense with doing this stuff. Joe, thank you for being thanks on the for program. Your time. I appreciate it. Hope to guys see you soon. All right. All right. Thanks. thanks. What's going on, real fans? Real talk. It's Trip Young. Just here to do a quick wrap up. I've been on the camera all day. But um, we was out here checking out Ron Hargrave in the Hits Basketball League, Hoops in the Sun. For those of you that don't know, they lost today, but, you know, they'll get them on the next round. They're still the champs. And um, if next time, if they want up losing then for the third game, myself and, and uh, Statman is going to suit up and uh, come off the bench and, you know, just kind of set the tone for these guys to get them on the same playing level that, that we're on right now. Because, you know, back in the day, you know, my jump shot was real. But I had to retire, you know, because of a knee injury. But real fans, real talk, trip young, we out. You wanna you, you, you ready to challenge the stat man for a one on one? Oh man, that'd, that'd be no problem. I'll play you on my knees, man. <laughs> <laughs>